I'm Evan Thomas. I'm the director of the uh, Sustainable Water, Energy, and Environmental Technologies Lab here, the SWEET Lab, and I'm an assistant professor here at PSU. This is the SWEET Lab. We are focused on developing life support technologies for people living in harsh environments. So most of our work is focused internationally in developing communities where we work on surface water treatment systems, biogas generators, cook stoves, things that are aimed at addressing public health challenges in rural communities. But we also have an emphasis on uh, on spacecraft applications. We do some work for NASA looking at sustainable life support systems where we can keep people alive and healthy for a long period of time when they're far away from Earth. So it's actually similar to keeping people alive and healthy in rural Rwanda and on the moon. One of our big emphasis is on surface water treatment. Yeah, for example, we've been working in Rwanda since 2003 in rural, densely populated mountainous communities where the water is contaminated with bacteria. And a lot of the traditional interventions like source water protection weren't, wasn't feasible because you couldn't just move people off of one hillside to protect the water that's coming in there. Uh, wells aren't very feasible because the groundwater is too deep. Point of use household systems were very difficult because the communities were too densely populated to pick your target community and also uh, very impoverished. It's difficult to even afford a few dollars a year to replace a system. So we developed our own community scale surface water treatment systems which are relatively speaking compared to a municipal sized system easy to maintain, uh, much more affordable, but they're able to serve as many as 3,000 people per day. Up to 80,000 liters of water we can treat with our gravity fed sand filters, gravel filters, and then ultra solar panel ultraviolet disinfection systems. So we use PV power systems to power ultraviolet disinfection and that can treat water for 3,000 people at a time. And the UV systems, that's a little bit more high tech than what's traditionally done in a remote rural environment, but we're able to treat water for less than a fifth of a cent per liter, so less than a cent per gallon. And we also have another high-tech component to that, and that's the monitoring system. We monitor flow rate, mo pressure, ultraviolet transmittance, ultraviolet lamp status, and we respond to the varying water quality and flow rate conditions and adjust our UV lamps to make sure that we're disinfecting the water all the time. And if the system fails, one of our technicians is notified automatically. It has a, a cellular phone board integrated in it, and if the system fails, our technician is notified in Kigali, and we can respond the same day and get the system back up online. This is a control system for, uh, water, for a UV light water treatment system. And uh, these are the actual physical controls that control valves, flow rate. You can monitor uh, pressure, flow rate, water level, uh, UV transmittance. This is, this is a valve, basically opens and close, closes based on flow rate if the flow rate gets too high. Um, and we have, or we have to stop the stop the flow for some reason. This valve will turn and and stop the flow. This is the flow meter uh, that sends a signal, telling us how much water is going through the system at any given time. Uh, these are just the electronic components that control those. These are the the UV lights that actually decontaminate the water. Uh, they disrupt the DNA of the bacteria essentially. There's an actual working um, UV. Uh, decontamination box in Rwanda right now that's controlled from a screen exactly like this one. Um, we can access that's those controls from here, from anywhere in the world, from an app on an iPhone even. We're aimed, we're looking at sustainable life support. So we have similar ways that we think about what a technology needs to do long term. Low maintenance, easy to repair, easy to replace, easily understood, and can provide a critical function. And we might not meet a standard that you might find in a hospital here or in a water treatment plant in Portland, but we are able to operate for far cheaper and more robustly in an environment where you don't have all that expertise and all the resources necessary to replace things. So for example, we have an oxygen concentrator system we're developing that provides 40% oxygen to a remote developing world hospital. And this is not nearly the 99% oxygen that you'll get uh, at a hospital here in Portland, but we're able to do it for a tenth or even a hundredth of the cost. And 40% oxygen for a patient is way better than the 20% than they have normally when that hospital is not going to be able to afford the $100,000 machine. 
We have projects going on in Rwanda, Kenya, Nicaragua, Mexico, Indonesia, Guatemala, and they're all focused on either providing technologies that address public health challenges like water treatment, cook stove systems, biogas systems, or technologies that monitor the impact of that work. There are many thousands of nonprofits or government organizations or companies that are working all over the world to do these types of projects, but unfortunately there's not a lot of data that's available on what's working and what's not. And so one of the things that we're doing here in the Sweet Lab is developing instrumented monitoring technologies that we can offer to those organizations so that they can get real feedback. So rather than going and just surveying uh, a year later or six months later, you know, how's the water treatment system working, we continuously monitor the quality of the water, if the system's working, how much water is going through it, so we know real time if the system's functioning, if people are using it. Our bread and butter over the past few years has been those technologies, working in developing rural communities to provide improved water treatment systems, improved cook stoves, improved biogas generators. But what we're trying to do to operate on a little bit different level now is offer a service to many of the organizations that are doing that project level work because we saw that as a gap. We saw that many projects were failing and people didn't even know that they were failing until years later because the data was so fragmented. And so now we're able to get instruments in the field and get continuous real-time data on what's working and what's not. And we seek to help improve the development sector by better allocating resources to successful programs.